Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, George Widom. Hey everybody, it's George Widom reporting for Widom's World. Well, this week we have a unique question and it's asked in a unique way, which I think is pretty cool. I got a question sent in from Kevin Parr and he sent in his question via YouTube. How cool is that? So let me show you that video right now and we'll get right on to it. Hi George, quick question for you here. Uh, I'm just gonna run you through my setup, which is a, an iMac with a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 uh, Rocket five speakers um, and there's the cable for the mic which goes down the stairs so the lead comes down and into here like this into my microphone uh, I just wanted to ask if there's anything that I can keep in here that I can put some headphones in and can actually monitor my mix um, when I'm recording stuff because other than having to go back upstairs and then find out that something's peaked and then I have to record it again is there anything I can put down here like a little mixer or something like that I can put headphones into and also that I can monitor the levels of the input from the Scarlett 2i2. So Kevin's question I think is a two-parter so I'll approach both parts but before I do I've got another question that's coming this week that is somewhat related, so I figured let's combine two, and we'll feed two birds with one piece of bread. Uh, this one's from Greg Kleist, and he says, I'm just starting in VO and currently have a Rode NT1A and a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. People love those things, huh? And I'm in my walk-in closet now, but I anticipate that I will get a booth at some point. In your in or out episode, you said that the computer should not be in the booth. Now, here's probably the stupidest question you ever got. Not a chance, man. If the computer is out of the booth, how do you turn on the recording process in your DAW, which is your recording software? Do you turn it on outside the booth, then get in, then get out to stop it again? I'm sure I'll have a duh moment when I hear the answer, but please help. So let me first address Kevin's question about how do you monitor the audio? It's a good question. He's pretty far away from his uh, recording system. It's upstairs, and he's got a long microphone run going down to his closet. So the simple answer is you run a long headphone extension cable down the same run, down to the closet, and you plug in your headphones. Voila. You can hear yourself, and you can hear playback. Now, how could you possibly play back audio from the closet when you're downstairs and your computer is upstairs? Just hit record, walk into the booth, record your spot, and when you're done, walk back out, hit stop. There's no drama to it. Just record, come back, stop. Either way, you always have to trim your heads and tails, you know, the beginning and the end of the audio file. That's, that's part of the game no matter how close you are to the computer you're always going to do that edit so what's the big deal if you have you know 10 seconds 30 seconds of extra lead time and another 10 to 30 seconds on the tail big whoop no big deal right so i mean that's really the simple answer to the question but if you'd really rather be able to monitor the recording process say you want to see that the software is actually rolling while you're recording that's where things get more interesting Twisted Wave, which you guys all know because if you watch my shows, you know it's my favorite doll, has a remote control app for the iPhone and the iPad, and it's totally free. You install it, and it gives you control over record, playback, and setting markers, all from a little, you know, convenience of an iPhone or an iPad. Just keep it right there on your copy stand or nearby, and you can start, stop, marker, really handy. If something goes wrong and it stops recording, the device will show that the recording is no longer rolling. So it's pretty simple. But it doesn't show levels, so you have no way of knowing if the level is clipping or distorting while you're recording. And frankly, if you're listening to what you're recording in your headphones, you still probably can't tell for sure if you've clipped or distorted during a recording unless the, record, the clipping is rather severe 
because you're monitoring the audio, what we call pre-digital encoding or pre-AD converter. Uh, you're usually going to be monitoring through the built-in headphone monitoring circuit or zero latency circuit of your interface, in which case both of you are using a uh, Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 that has a switch that allows you to turn on the zero latency, aka direct monitoring circuit. But if you do clip the AD converter, that is the part that's converting analog to digital, you're never going to hear it in your headphones while you're recording. You may clip the preamp, and that might make some distortion along the way. But the likelihood of you hearing that, unless it's really severe, is probably not very good. So bottom line is you really cannot monitor the recording track and, and know for sure that the audio quality going to the computer is free of distortion or clipping while you're recording. And frankly, you can't watch a meter while you're reading a script either. <laughs> so the bottom line is you really do have to just set your levels properly, and that can take some trial and error. And if it means leaving a little more headroom, in other words, recording so that your levels don't peak so close to zero and land somewhere between 10 and 6 or minus 10 and minus 6 dB, you're probably going to be better off anyhow. Believe me, you cannot engineer ride levels, any of that kind of stuff while you voice act. Not possible. Okay. But let me sum up the rest of the answer here. If you really want to be technical and you really would like to see the computer from inside your studio, if the two spaces are not terribly far apart, let's say you have a room and a room or a booth in a room and the computer's not far from the room, you could just hook up a second keyboard monitor and mouse inside your booth. And it's sort of like driving a boat where you've got a flying bridge up top and then the bridge down below where you, uh, you, know, you can drive safely inside. It's just like that. You can control a computer from two places and switch back and forth seamlessly. It works effortlessly. It works on Mac. It works on PC. And uh, just about every computer available on the market can run two displays these days. And keyboard and mouse with USB or Bluetooth, piece of cake. But in the case of Kevin, where he's got two stories, a much longer run of cable, that could logistically be challenging. So another cool way to go is to use your iPad, if you have one, or iPhone, even if you're in a pinch, and load a software that will allow you to remote control your computer from another location. In my particular case, I have a software called TeamViewer. And I load TeamViewer on my phone, load it up on the screen here. And once it loads, it'll show my computers that are available for me to control. And once I choose to remote control my computer, uh, my computer will then show up a, a control panel on the screen and say, hey, you're controlling your computer remotely now. There is my phone showing exactly what's seeing on the screen in real time. And that little window that's popped up over top there is the control panel for Team Viewer. There's some other cool ones like Splash Top and some others you can check out. But this would be a cool way to keep your recording software open in a window and see what it's doing while you're in your booth and make sure your levels are okay or make sure it's still rolling, you know, so on and so forth. That was a lot of fun. I love these high-tech uh, questions with even more high-tech answers. So keep those questions coming. And if you want to submit yours by YouTube, hey, I'll go for it. I love it. Send your questions in to widomsworld at edgestudio.com and I'll get to it just as soon as possible. And uh, if you need to get response more quickly or you really have a more detailed question or it's just something that needs more one-to-one -one support, then that's where you might want to reach out to me over at vostudiotech.com. There you can sign up for service one-on-one -on -one with me. I have an automated scheduling system. It couldn't be easier to book time. And if you'd rather just send me audio files, have me analyze them, send back processing settings, all that kind of stuff, that's available too for you over there in the services menu. So I really appreciate you watching, and I look forward to seeing you next week on the next edition of Widom's World.